smooth. Let's not fucking die today, shall we? I need that shell station up there. I'm gonna get gas. Why do you do that? Why do people do that? Why do you leave like a whole car length between you and the next person? Yeah, I get you don't need to pull up to somebody's bumper. But for heaven's sakes, you don't need to leave two car lengths. Here we go. Let's get some gas. Let's get some gas. <laughs> what the F is going on here? Uh, maybe not. Maybe I'll find somewhere else to get some gas. Hmm. There's a cluster F if I've ever seen one. What the fuck, people? Where are you going? Are you done? Are you not getting gas? Well, I believe I'll help myself to some of this gas. What's up, champ? Alright, folks. Let's have a look. Let's see if we get somebody to talk to us. I breathe loud in here. I'm sorry, people. I just don't... Oh, look at this guy. He's fucking cool. I'm getting out of his way. Right now. Where are you going there, Stump? Where are you going, Stump Humper? Harley people, they ain't got all the gear all the time. They buy into that lifestyle, and boy oh boy, they sure need you to know they ride a Harley when they're not anywhere near their Harley. And when they're on their Harley, oh boy, look out. Branding madness. Absolute branding madness. All right, let's go on a little journey, shall we? There's a moto vlogger. Uh, it goes by the name of Walterific. I may have mentioned him in the past. I don't know. I don't pay attention to these things. Walterific. And uh, he's got 2.8 eight million subscribers so basically that's his only job is YouTubing motor vlogging but what sets Mr. Walterific apart from a lot of if not all of them out there he suffers from depression a lot and he is not afraid to talk about it. And given today's climate of you must appear like you are living your shiniest, bestest, coolest life, uh, that's a pretty rare thing to do. I too suffer from depression. I have a lot for a long time. And I used to be on medication for it for a long time. But I've managed it throughout the years. It comes and goes. It comes and goes and uh, just deal with the spikes. My weapons of choice in dealing with the depression spikes when I get them, or to keep the spikes at bay, are running, cycling, and motorbiking. And of course my wife, she helps keep it real for me. She certainly doesn't give me the pity pot. 
that's for sure which is definitely a good thing up here to your left you will see a very old cemetery I'd like to go in there and check out some of the headstones I think that's disrespectful I don't I could be wrong anywho I I'm pretty thankful that my wife doesn't you know, give me too much uh, too much sympathy for when I bitching and moaning about life I think she's definitely clever enough to figure out when it's the real deal and when I'm just being a bitch but nonetheless I have definitely had my bouts of depression and have needed medication mm -hmm. and I've needed my meds but as I said nowadays well for years I dealt with depression by keeping myself very physically fit And through fitness, sports, I've met a lot of great people. Which, of all, which you know, that's also helped me stay level. Um, certainly, unfortunately, hey dude, what the F? I, uh, I can't get that sort of leveling from work unfortunately where I work I have a lot of depressing um, people around me I also get very frustrated in dealing with the public because I find that the public in general are complete fucking morons and I don't really have much taste for that. And unfortunately a large part of my job is dealing with the public. So it really depresses me. And all I have to do is look forward to... Sport or motorcycling after work. <sighs> that really helps me. As for my co-workers, yeah, I got a handful that are really good for my soul, so to speak. My vibe, my mojo. But there are a lot of them that are very negative, whiny fucking bitches who take life for granted. That's enough of that. With this COVID-19 thing that's going on, unfortunately, I haven't been able to race this year. And it's the first time in eight years, maybe nine, nine years that I haven't been able to race no racing means no real motivation to stay fit as fit as I usually am which kind of sucks but you know that's the way she goes yeah usually I'm racing at least one triathlon in the year um, for eight years it was an average of four or five and I would do a lot of run races a lot of half marathons I would do the pace bunnying for the Vancouver half marathon and the rock and roll half marathon and 10k the run for water half marathon pace bunnying 
I do a lot of trail racing. It seems that over the last, what, four years, I do at least one 50K trail race every year. Not now, homies. Not now. Maybe next year. They're still racing in the United States in some parts of the country. Not anywhere where I usually race, Washington State. I do not. Uh, I do not see any races going on there. But certainly the ones I've signed up for, they've been shit canned till next year. And even if I could go down, I can't because the U.S. Canadian border is closed to non-essential travel. And uh, yes. Racing does not qualify as essential travel. So not only am I not allowed to go down to the United States to race in Washington State, if I did, I have to quarantine myself for two weeks upon my return. And if I do not, I face huge penalties, huge fines, and rightly so. I did this uh, route on the bicycle last week with my buddy Kev, and holy moly, did I ever enjoy myself. It was fucking awesome. As much as I like running, running is incredible for fitness, but it is not as much of a social activity. God, this effing fucking three-way always catches me off. It is not... I don't find running as social as cycling. You really need to breathe when you run. And if you're doing a hard run, if you're doing a hard workout, you're not talking. You're not talking that much. At least I'm not. I have a very piss-poor lung capacity. And uh, so I don't really do well if I'm talking and running. Cycling is a completely different story. Clearly you don't need to breathe as hard while well, just cycling, even if you're going hard. And it's definitely a more social sport. You ride by somebody and you just gab away and turn those pedals. And you go for beers go for coffee and pastries. It's very social. And back in the day, I used to do the Wednesday night Tempo 10K run with a bunch of buddies. And I gotta tell you, I fucking really miss all those guys. Peter and Tony and Alan and Courtney. That's why I like cycling. I should have, I really should have a look to see if my ghost is still there. Man, I can't see it. <laughs> I tell a lot of my running friends, oh, look at this, 5-0, <laughs> what are you guys doing? Murder scene? Uh, I tell a lot of my running friends, man, if you're getting burned out or injured with cycling, with, <clears throat> let me start that again. I tell all my running friends, if you're getting burned out or injured from running too much, start cycling, man, start cycling. Yo, let's not go through the water. There's a lot of dirt on the road and I don't want to get dirty. Well, if the ghost is gonna fall off, it'll be falling off right about here, going along the bridge. The Fraser River, everybody. That's the Agassiz Bypass. Man, I'm digging these new wheels. Rubber tires. A wheel is the complete thing, you moron. Boots. Slang. 
Let's use some cool motorcycle slang. These boots are wicked. Oh, I think I was supposed to turn there. I think that was the bakery. Hello, look the other way, sir. All right. All right, recon is done. Would you look at that? Well, that scared the shit out of my balls.